Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, separate black and white balls. Interesting uh, problem name, but ignoring that, I feel like they could have chosen anything other than balls, but anyway. We have n balls given to us in the form of a binary string. One represents the uh, black balls and zero represents the white balls. Suppose we're given a string that looks something like this. And just remember that these are characters. This is not an integer. So I kind of made that mistake when I was coding it. The idea is that we want to separate the balls such that the white balls will be on the left and the right balls will be on the right. Not a difficult thing to do, obviously. You could just count the number of white balls, and in this case, there's four of them, so we'd put four white balls over here, and then there's two white balls, and then we'd put them on the right. So then we'd have the string that we want, but that's actually not what we want to do in this case. We don't actually want to build that output string. We want to know what's the minimum number of steps, uh, specifically in this case, swaps, that it would take to actually form this string, and we want the minimum number it would take to form this string. So this is not a difficult problem. It might seem difficult at first if you're a beginner especially, but if you know the fundamentals of data structures and algorithms, specifically this algorithm, quicksort, there is a step in that the first step of the quicksort algorithm is called the partition step. If you know this fundamental step, on a deep level, there are literally a dozen, maybe even like 20 or more leak code problems you can just solve just by knowing this very simple fact. So I just want to remind you in case you have possibly skipped the fundamentals, which is perfectly okay. Nobody is born knowing this stuff, but I really want to encourage you to learn it. If you want to use a neat code IO to do that, there is, I believe, a quick sort problem. And I think this is like part of the DSA course for beginners. But even if you don't want to use neat code IO, there are many different ways you can learn this. And I highly, highly recommend you learn this. I promise you anyone who's good at leap code or good at competitive programming knows this stuff as if it's like one plus two or something. So with that aside, I'm still going to explain this to you. The idea is if we were just to kind of simulate how we would do that, when we say swap, this problem defines it as taking two adjacent elements and swapping them. So as we're iterating from left to right, we can notice that this is a zero, great. And this is a one. This is clearly not in the correct position. So what do we do? Well, we have to swap it with something. If the next value is also a one, then it doesn't really make sense to swap these together. It's a wasted step. It doesn't accomplish anything. So how do you even approach this problem from a conceptual level? Well, it's actually very, very simple. And it's just the same as the partition step from quicksort. The idea is we only pick one of the elements and only worry about those. I'm going to focus on the zeros because those are what we want on the left side. So following the partition step from quicksort, what we're going to do is say every time we see a zero, push it as far left as we can until it's stacked with the rest of the zeros. For example, this is a zero. It's already at the beginning. Can't push it any further. This is a one, so just ignore it. And this is a zero, so shift it to the left as much as we can. Right now, we'd swap it with its left neighbor. We'd get something like this. At this point, we could technically still shift it to the left and swap it, but that's not going to accomplish anything. These are both zero anyway, so that's a wasted step. So in this case, it only took us one step to do this. Next, we arrive at this position. We're going to do the same thing. Swap it with the left neighbor, which is one. So it's going to get kind of hard to draw this, but OK, I'll just turn that into a zero and then put a one over here. And continuing to iterate, we get here. It's a one. Ignore it. We get here. It's a zero. So swap it with its left neighbor. We get this. And once again, we have to swap it with the left neighbor one more time. And then we get uh, this. And now you can see just by focusing on the zeros, if we theoretically put all the zeros over here, where do you think the ones would go? I mean, they have no other position to be in other than all the way at the right. This works very simply because it's a two step kind of partition. Like there's only two categories, either it's a zero or it's a one. So everything that's not a zero is going to end up over here. Now, in terms of how we actually implement this in terms of code, we don't actually want to perform the swaps. We just want to count 
the number of swaps. So rather than modifying the uh, string, which is not going to be cheap, it's going to be pretty expensive to do that. We can just keep track of the count. More specifically, we can keep track of a pointer. This is a two pointer algorithm, just like with quicksort partition. We're going to have a pointer which tells us this is where we want to put the first zero. So this is our left pointer. I'm going to have a right pointer, which is going to start at the beginning as well, and it's going to scan through every item. And so we see that this is a zero. So we want to put this value in this position. How many swaps would it take for us to do that? Well, theoretically, if the right pointer was actually, uh, let's say, over here, and we wanted to push it all the way there, it would take one, two, three swaps. And that can be computed by taking the right pointer minus the left pointer. So since in this case, they're both at the same position, it's going to take zero swaps. So that's how we would calculate it, right minus left. Now, after we place a zero over here, that must mean that the next zero should go at the next spot. And so that's where the left pointer is now going to be incremented to. And the right pointer is always going to be incremented by one because we're using that to scan through the input. So now this is a one, we ignore it. So the left pointer stays here, the right pointer will be incremented by one over here. Now, this is a zero. It must go in this uh, spot. So we will take the difference between these, which is going to be one now, and we'll add it to our result, which is the count. So the total count. So now our count, which I'm going to call the result, is going to be one, and the right pointer will be uh, shifted over here, and the left pointer will be incremented because this is where the next zero is going to go. And so once again, the difference between these is one. So our total result will be two right now. We will increment the left pointer to be over here. The right pointer will be over here. And so far, what our string would look like would be something like this. This is a one, so we ignore it. Left pointer is still here. Our right pointer will now be here. And so we see that this is a zero. Take the difference between uh, these two indexes. That's going to be two this time. It'll take uh, two swaps to get it over here. And so I believe the total result will be four for this example. So that's the solution. It's going to be a one pass linear time constant space solution. Let's code it up. So what I'm going to do is initialize my left pointer to the beginning, and then I'm going to have a result which is going to keep track of the total. That's what we're going to end up returning. And then I'm just going to iterate through the input with a for loop. We don't actually need to declare a separate right variable. We can just do that in the loop itself. And we're going to go through the length of the input string s. And so there's really only one case. Is the character at the current right pointer equal to zero, not the integer zero, but the string zero. I made that mistake the first time. Now, if it is, what do we do? Well, of course, we want to shift the left pointer because we filled that original spot with a zero now. But before we do this, it's very important that we do this before we want to take the difference between right and left and add that to the result. I mean, it's possible that both of these pointers are at the same position, in which case this would evaluate to zero anyway. So it's not like we need a separate if statement to check that these are equal because elegantly this math will work out. We don't need an else case if we see a one because we're not going to do anything anyway. So let's run this. You can see that it works. I promise you this is the most efficient solution. These runtimes are pretty random. If you found this helpful, check out Neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.